So this is the unit on stoichiometry. And the beauty of stoichiometry is we now get to use all the information we know about writing and balancing chemical reactions and mole conversions and actually start to look at our chemical reactions and not only observe them like say oh a yellow product is produced or it's a precipitate or whatever but now we can actually say in the beginning we will get a yellow precipitate and we're going to get three grams of it and then do the experiment and verify that yes we did get a yellow precipitate and look we got three grams so the ideal situation is we're going to be predicting what's going to actually come out of our chemical reactions. And that's where we're going to come in. That's where stoichiometry is going to come in. So first thing I want to do is, because we've been dealing with mole conversions for a couple of weeks, I want to go back a little bit and talk about the chemical reactions. So the first thing is, let's name these chemical reactions. So pause the video real fast. Quick, jot down the names for each of these compounds or each of the substances in this reaction. And then unpause it and see the answers that I'm going to write. Okay, so obviously we have uh, Na, which is just sodium. H2O, of course, we know is water. NaOH, uh, NaOH would be sodium hydroxide. And last but not least, we then have on the end hydrogen gas. You don't really need to put the gas because it's indicated there, but I did it anyway. I didn't write sodium solid. Now, notice there's no ions because I don't have any charges on any of the substances. So sodium plus water yields sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. A uh, type of single replacement reaction is what's going on here. Now I want you to balance the reaction. So again, take a second, pause the video, balance the reaction, unpause, see what I write. Okay, so I look and I see, okay, I've got one plus two is three hydrogens on the right, but I only have two hydrogens on the left. I have one sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen. So hydrogen is the only thing that's unbalanced here. Now, unfortunately, because the hydrogens are in two different spots, I can't just say, okay, least common denominator, two on the left, three on the right. Let me multiply it by the opposite and get a factor of six. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a 2 in front of the sodium hydroxide, which gives me 4 hydrogens on the right. And if I put a 2 here, that gives me 4 hydrogens on the left. Now I'm going to go over, balance my sodiums, and now I can see that everything balances out. I have 2 sodiums, 2 sodiums, 4 hydrogens, 2 plus 2 is 4 hydrogens, 2 oxygens, and 2 oxygens. Okay, so now I have this balanced chemical equation. Now... Here's the thing about the chemical equation. This is something that we haven't really discuss, all, discussed. All we ever did was put numbers out in front. These numbers mean something. And it's not just, oh, I've got two atoms of sodium on the left and two atoms of sodium on the right. It's more than that. What these numbers tell us is they represent a ratio between the substances in a chemical reaction. And it's actually, what kind of ratio? It's actually a mole ratio. So in order to do this reaction perfectly, I need two moles of sodium and two moles of water to react together. And when I do that, I will produce exactly two moles of sodium hydroxide and one mole of hydrogen gas. So these coefficients can actually be used to predict how much of a substance we need or how much will be produced. For example, let's say that I told you that I had four moles of Na instead of my two. And I had my standard H2O, I'm sorry, uh, two moles of H2O. Well, if I've got four moles of sodium and two moles of H2O, the problem here is I have a two to two ratio or a one to one ratio. So I'm going to have leftover sodium. So I know that if I want to make this reaction occur properly, I need at least four moles of sodium, uh, four moles of water to get the reaction to work. See, so I can use this two to two ratio or one to one ratio of my two substances to predict, okay, I'm going to have this leftover, I'm going to have that much. Now, if I told you that I have an excess amount of water, but I have four moles of sodium. Well, because the ratio of sodium to sodium hydroxide is also two to two, then I know that if I have four moles of sodium, that means I will get, I will produce four moles of my sodium hydroxide. Okay, because the ratio is right there in these mole, in these mole reactions. 
So these numbers are not just a balancing of the, the ions or the atoms, but it's actually a balancing of the moles in the chemical reaction. Okay, and we're going to use this information over and over and over again. Now, of course, people always ask me, what happens if the coefficients aren't easy to work with? Like when you're working with the, the sodium and everything, it's easy because it's 2 to 2 to 2 to 1. But what happens if the numbers are funky? So here's the reaction of aluminum with chloride, uh, with chlorine gas to produce aluminum chloride. Very explosive reaction. So I need to balance this. So if I balance it, I have this as my coefficients. So the ratio is not easy. It's not a 1 to 1 anymore. It's not a 1 to 2. It's actually 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. It doesn't change how things are done. For example, I know the ratio of Cl of Cl2 to AlCl3 is 3 to 2. <laughs> Okay, so if I were to give you three moles of chlorine, you know you can produce two moles of aluminum chloride. Well, what if I gave you six? What happens if I gave you six moles of chlorine? Well, the ratio doesn't change. It's still three to two. Six is twice three. Therefore, I will get four moles of aluminum chloride. See how it works? So it doesn't matter what you're working with. You just use the mole ratio to help figure it out. So let's do an actual example here and use it in action. So you're going to need your calculator. I'm going to pull mine out in a second. As I do the problem, you'll see my calculator pop up. So pull out your calculator. Let's do this example problem. How many grams of carbon monoxide, CO, are needed to react with an excess of iron 3 oxide to produce 558 grams of iron? The equation for the reaction is, okay, so here we go. I have my chemical reaction. Now you'll notice that I have a lot of words. Word problems are the name of the game in stoichiometry. But no matter what, I only have one given right now. So I go back to the same thing I tell you every single time. What do you do first? It's a mathematical problem. And hopefully, the first thing that you're going to say is write down your given. OK? So of course, I always start with what I'm given. And this, these types of problems are going to look very much like our mole conversions. I'm sorry. So we know we have to write down our given. So I start with it, and I write 558 grams of iron. Now, there's a lot of other information that's going on in this problem, and I'm going to talk about the other information in a few minutes, so bear with me. Now, after I have my little mole, uh, after I have my given written, when in doubt, mole it out. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I've got my conversion. So I'm going to get myself out of grams, and I'm going to convert to moles. And of course, we remember from mole conversions, which we just did, that one mole of any substance is equal to the weight from the periodic table. Now I'm dealing with just iron here, so it's just Fe. Okay, there's no other substances. I, I'm working with this substance right there. Okay, so now I've converted from grams into moles. Now, here's where that mole ratio becomes important. Notice the question said, how many grams of carbon monoxide? Okay, but my given was 558 grams of iron. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to set up a mole ratio between grams of iron and grams of carbon monoxide. Well, there is no ratio between grams and grams. You never, never, never do it between grams and grams. Guarantee you, someone in here is going to make a mistake, and I want to make sure that you don't. Always remember, the only way you can compare two substances is by the mole number. Okay, the number of moles of the substance. So if I want to make the comparison, the best way to do so is in the mole ratio from the chemical reaction. Okay, so I'm in moles of iron right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up another step. And I'm going to use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. Of course, the units for what I'm given is on the bottom, and the units for what I want go on the top. So I have moles of iron right now here. So my moles of iron have to go on the bottom. Now, here comes the mole ratio. Grab the coefficient for, the, for your given and bring it down to the bottom here. Grab the moles for the coefficient for what you want and put it on the top. So my 2 goes on the bottom. My 3 goes on the top. Okay, So this is my mole ratio that I just used. Now, 
after that's in there, now that I'm in moles, now I can go into what I want. And again, the question asked for grams. So I'm in moles. I know how to convert to grams because I'm an expert on that. Of course, the units for the given go on the bottom. I'm in moles. Moles goes on the bottom. I want grams. Grams goes on the top. And of course, I know that one mole of any substance is equal to the weight from the periodic table. So the weight of carbon monoxide is 28.01 grams. Remember, two places past the decimal from weights from the periodic table. Multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and we're going to get an answer. Now, let me show you how I'm going to put this into the, into the calculator, because this is where people tend to make mistakes in their, in their uh, stoichiometry problems. Okay, so watch what I'm doing. Parentheses, five, five, eight times three times two, eight point zero one. Ooh, I missed the two. Oh, let me go back and put in that two. There we go. An important, important number there. Close my parentheses. Divided by everything on the bottom. Now, before, in a lot of these problems, we only had one number on the bottom. But now I've got two. So I have to make sure I'm including everything, and that's why the parentheses are my friend. 55.85 times 2. Enter. And my answer is 419.77. Da -de -da -de -da. Of course, I go back to my given to figure out the number of sig figs. So 419 will, of course, round to... 420 decimal, because I need to make that zero significant. Okay, and when I'm done, I always box my answer because now there's a lot of numbers on the page. So let me run through real fast what I did. So of course, my initial number is my given. This is the part where I convert to moles. This middle part is my mole ratio from the reaction. Rxn is reaction. And then, of course, at the end, I'm converting back to grams. Okay? Every stoichiometry problem will basically look like that. So what I'm going to do, so that covered the initial information. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put together the second slide of this, the second podcast, is going to be just example problems. So I'm going to take some example problems from your review sheets. And, of course, you want to refer back to the review sheets. I don't do homework problems in the, in the podcast. Sorry, folks. So I'm going to refer back to the review sheet. So pull out your review sheet, and I'll go through a couple of examples real specifically here so that you can see the stoichiometry in action.